Now, in this video, I introduce how we think about returns in this course. Now, first, the return RT is a one-period return. So it's the return you earn when buying an asset, let's say, as at time t minus 1, and selling it at time t. For example, here, RT, defined as the log of ST, divided by st minus 1 is the continuously compounded return, also called log return. As of t minus 1, that return is unknown. Of course, once you are in period t, you know the magnitude of that return. Now, that example teaches us that each return has a predictable and an unpredictable component. We will write that as follows. Where the predictable component as of time t minus 1 is called mu t minus 1. We call the unpredictable component epsilon t. Epsilon t is also called noise component. Now, what do we mean by a predictable component. Well, that says that mu t minus 1 is your best educated guess as of time t minus 1 about the unknown magnitude of rt. Mathematically, we write that as follows. Now here, the capital E stands for the expectation operator. The vertical bar says that you condition the expectation about RT on something. But on what exactly? Well, you condition on all information that is known as of time t minus 1. That information is abbreviated with f t minus 1. Simplistically speaking, all information that you can find on the internet or in newspapers, as of time t minus 1, is part of your information set f t minus 1. And by the way, the two dots in front of the equality sign highlight that that's a definition. So then, what is the unpredictable component epsilon t? Well, that is the realized prediction error which we write as follows. So the prediction error is the spread between the realized return at time t and your best predictor as of t minus 1. And as returns are not perfectly predictable, epsilon t will not be zero. Now second, in this course, we are going to learn different concepts for how to predict returns. One class of models are linear factor models. I call these fundamental financial return predicting models. Well-known examples are the capital asset pricing model, also called in short CAPM, or the Pharma French three factor model, or the Pharma French five factor model. Other linear factor models that we talk about in this course are based on statistical principal components or on observed macroeconomic factors. All of these fundamental financial return predicting models are special cases of what is called the APT, meaning the arbitrage pricing theory. Plain statistical time series models are another popular approach for predicting returns. Here in the course, we focus on the class of Armour PQ models. Now, Armour PQ stands for Autoregressive Moving Average Models. Third, in this course, we also learn about how to model the noise component epsilon t. We start off with the assumption that epsilon t is a white noise or a Gaussian white noise process. 
as the volatility of epsilon t tends to cluster in financial data. We learn to model epsilon t with the ArchM framework. That stands for autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. We also generalize that to Garch MS models, the so-called generalized Arch models. Both of these approaches allow us to capture time variation in the conditional second moments of returns and to account for potential excess kurtosis, which we also call fat tails. Because these approaches do not capture asymmetries in returns, such as skewness, we also introduce the threshold gauge and the exponential gauge models, which are further generalizations to also allow for negative and positive return skewness. And lastly, if you want that a return RT follows a specific return distribution, you need to put that distribution onto epsilon t. For example, if conditional on ft minus 1, rt shall follow a Gaussian distribution, you have to model epsilon t as a Gaussian random variable. But if you want rt to follow a t distribution or any other type of fat tail distribution, you need to mod model epsilon t as a t distribution or with your particular choice of fat tailed distribution.